Friends, will you join your heart with mine for a word of prayer? Let us pray. Holy and gracious love, break open our hearts and our minds anew this morning. Grant us your grace that we may grow into all that you intend. O God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, that they might be found pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Dear friends, I want to say what a privilege it is to be with you somewhat in person again. I, I have delighted joining with you uh, for worship online these, in various Sundays in this past year. And what a gift that has been. And what a gift you are not only to yourselves, but to the world. For indeed, the world has become every congregation's parish. Before I offer a reflection on our text this morning, I want to First off, a word of greeting from your siblings in the Heartland Conference. 330 congregations, chaplaincies of a wide variety in diaconal and other educational ministries, which daily are a witness to the love of God made known to us in Jesus Christ. You may know that two of our congregations are in West Virginia and eight in northern Kentucky. Uh, that's one more than when I was with you the last time. That number was seven. One congregation has actually rejoined the United Church of Christ, celebrating the expansive expression of the gospel which we have been called to proclaim together in word and deed. Just one more vitally important thing I want you to hear. From the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for your commitment to the work we share near and far through your giving to our basic mission support called Our Church's Wider Mission. Your partnership in this way and in so many other ways is cultivating a hope and a movement toward a world of flourishing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now that said, you may wonder just where that flourishing is in these days. Yes, we're getting some glimpses of an opening up from COVID. I understand worship in person is going to happen in July here at First Church and that will feel very good. But full flourishing, I'm sure you have noticed, still seems a far way off. You may have noticed that there is still a malaise of spirit that permeates the life of the human family. A weightiness that will not easily give way that is larger than COVID and its consequences and existed long before we knew of COVID's existence. Human migration caused by climate change and global inequities increases daily. So, too, the fear of the other frequently manifesting itself in the polarizing polemics promoting a distancing of the human heart one from another, such that our common humanity seems an uncommon thing. There is a weightiness to the world, known by some for centuries, others discovered by others more recently, and still denied by many who choose not to see the full history of humanity and the world it has formed, which Jesus came to heal. The weight remains. Unless we think this is a new thing, we have a text this morning that reminds us that the weight of the world's way was familiar to Jesus. It was called the Roman Empire, and it lived by exerting the pressure of crucifixion's terror as a way to keep those on the fringes in line. There was a weightiness to the world, a pressing in all around and about that narrowed hope and sought to quench the flickering fire of spirit. So too for the first hearers of the gospel according to Mark, written just before or just after the fall of the temple in 70 AD, there was a weightiness to the world. It must have felt to them like the world was coming apart at the seams. Maybe you have felt that on any given day. I know I have. There is a weightiness to the world and a wondering the weight of the world seems so large. Can God do anything with this 
and with us. There is an ancient and present pondering for people of faith in every age, and with it comes questions about what will be the reigning or ruling energy and motion of life. Maybe you, like I, and so many in history, have felt the enormity of this reality that I'm describing. The weight so large, and any one of our lives so small. With Jesus, these realities get constantly framed with the question, when will the kingdom of God come? Now, more recently, maybe you have heard the word kingdom instead of kingdom. I like that reframing as a description of the alternative energy of God's agape energy taking center stage as an alternative to the death-dealing ways of Caesars of every age and time. But this question is not just a when question, but a how question. Jesus announces from the beginning of his ministry that the reign of love has already begun, though it seems hidden or even temporarily buried much of the time. Even after Pentecost, there's a wondering, how long, O oh love, before your will and way really take hold? The Apostle Paul called it an eager longing. Maybe you know of this in your own life as the weight of the world in its many expressions presses down. So today, today we encounter Jesus as Mark's gospel tells the story, and the subject is the kingdom or the kingdom of God, or the reign of love, capital L, as in God. And Jesus uses parables of seeds because he knows his listeners have actually seen this kind of miracle of life rising. I wonder if you have seen this miracle actually in these days. I was in the country cycling outside of Delaware where I live uh, this past week, and the corn and the soybeans in the fields out there are rising in some kind of amazing miracle. Maybe you've seen this yourself. If you haven't, I encourage you to get out of town. Go where the country is and see the miracle that is rising all around us, planted by farmers. But as Jesus reminds us, rising in life in ways we cannot fully explain. The weight of the earth giving way to the power and promise of the seed. Simply amazing against what would seem to be impossible odds. Jesus says the reign of self-giving love whose beginning and end is love, capital L, is like this. It starts necessarily small. But let it get sown into your heart and your mind and you will begin to discover something you could never have imagined. I have a feeling you know what I'm talking about. Openings and rootedness, both blossoming forth and deepening what otherwise might have seemed impossible. Little resurrections that resist the world's weight and turn things often imperceptibly toward the vision of flourishing, Jesus tells us, is God's deepest desire. And Jesus says again and again, it will not be stopped, though it may seem to be delayed for a time. Jesus used the mustard seed as his touch point. People in his time would have known of its smallness and of its invasive quality, a shrub that could literally take over growing as tall as 30 feet. And then Jesus reminds us, when it has grown, its highest calling is realized, to be a shelter for birds. Could it be that your life and mine, dear friends, is meant to be formed in some, into some kind of shelter for each other? Could it be that there is no seed of life too small, not yours, nor mine, nor anyone else's, to shift the weight of somebody's world in some way every day with little acts of love planted like a seed in the ground? I've always loved this perspective of Jesus framed by Mother Teresa of Calcutta. She was fond of saying, and you probably have heard this, none of us, including me, referring to herself, she would say, none of us can ever do great things. But we can all do small things with great amounts of love. And together, we can do something 
wonderful, that is, full of wonder. But even knowing this, the weight of the world often seems to win the day in my heart and maybe yours too. So how shall we remember? My parents had the good fortune to meet Mother Teresa while she was still living. And in their meeting, she gave them a card, which upon their return, my father copied and distributed as far and wide as he could because he knew about the weight of the world and how it can wear you out. And on that card, which is part of my little prayer corner at home, are these words about the ground that gives life, which begins with the small seed of deep silence. It reads, the fruit of silence is prayer. The fruit of prayer is faith. The fruit of faith is love. The fruit of love is service. The fruit of service is peace. I want you to hear that again. The fruit of silence is prayer. The fruit of prayer is faith. The fruit of faith is love. The fruit of love is service. The fruit of service is peace. And then she wrote, God bless you. Just a little seed, this card. Shifting the axis of everything. But you may be saying to yourself, it is just so small. And the way seems so long. Indeed, many days... It may be that the prevailing experience or perspective that wants to assert itself in our lives is that one. It's just so small. But every now and then, the small seed breaks open in the most unlikely of ways and pushes upward and outward to the seemingly most resistant of soils and reveals the reign of God and the reign of love in ways that surprise and inspire I witnessed this over a year ago when I was traveling on your, on your behalf and that of the United Church of Christ, together with other leaders from the UCC and the Christian Church Disciples of Christ and the United Church of Canada, with whom we share a partnership in many expressions. One of those has to do with our shared global partnerships through our Common Global Ministries Board. You may know that over the past two years, the Common Global Ministries Board has in inviting and encouraging every setting of the church to grow in its awareness of our ministry with partners in Southern Asia. And I know you know quite a bit about that through your own partnership with the Deep Griha Society. Our journey in late January and early February of 2020 took us to Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and India. In each of those settings, There were small seeds of the reign of love, capital L, sprouting right before our very eyes. A Sri Lankan pastor, educated at Eden Theological Seminary in St. Louis, one of our UCC seminaries, discovered while he was taking a pastoral counseling class at Eden that he was suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder as as a result of 30 years of civil war in Sri Lanka. He also discovered his pastoral calling to cultivate a ministry of PTSD treatment so that the needs of those he serves in very remote areas of Sri Lanka would not continue to be crushed by trauma and the weight of war experienced for such a very long time. Here, we saw one small seed fostering the growth of other seeds into the fullness of their God-given beloved identity. Here again, we saw that covenantal community of a global variety matters in ways that often might be hard to see in the beginning. But just ask the birds who find their shelter from such a tree of life-giving love that grows from such small seeds. And they will tell you, as these friends in Sri Lanka told us, life can be made new. The weight of the world cannot finally resist the reign of love planted in seeds small and watered with the spirit that is life. Yes, yes, yes. But there's more. Because in the world, as God intends it, there is always more to the story. You may know that 
This year marks the 50th anniversary of the Open and Affirming Coalition of the United Church of Christ. I applaud your work as a congregation and your commitment to a Christian witness of full inclusion of our LGBTQ plus siblings. 50 years ago, the vision of such inclusion was a small seed under the weight of the world. But that seed continues to break open despite the world's resistance to the rising of sheltering trees. But there's more to this story than just the work done by local congregations here in central Ohio or the Heartland Conference or the United Church of Christ or even the United States. Because you see, sometimes the seemingly small seed gets carried by a bird to another location and gets planted so that a new vision for life can grow. So it was that while we were in New Delhi in India at a meeting of the leaders of the Church of South India, we became aware of such a traveling seed. There, leaders shared with us that conversations of any kind about sexuality are rare openly in Indian culture. And open conversations about LGBTQ plus persons and their inclusion in the life of the church are rarer still. And then they went on to say, but we have hope because of what you have done in the United Church of Christ. We look to you for guidance and encouragement and clarity about the conversations necessary for an opening in our life so that all may be included. Your writing, your work, your lived witness gives us hope. Now you may know that there are almost 1.4 billion people in India and under 30 million Christians, or we might say a very small seed. But let us also remember that God often chooses the necessary small thing to be the vessel of a large vision yet to be fully realized. So a conversation open and intentional has broken open in India, shaped and encouraged by that of another small seed, our shared witness of what love can and should look like for every human being to flourish. Jesus reminds us there is a necessary small thing, a seed which when it has grown realizes its highest calling to be a shelter for birds. Your life and mine, dear friends, is meant to be formed into some kind of shelter for someone else, near or far, local or global. There is no seed of life too small, not yours, nor mine, nor anyone else's, to shift the weight of somebody's world in some way every day with little acts of love planted like a seed in the ground that good news may rise. This is the promise of the gospel. You can trust it with your life. I give thanks to God for you. Thanks be to God. Blessings on you, small seeds, on all of us, one and all. Godspeed. Amen and amen.